Yesterday, uh, precisely 11th of uh, October 2019, the appeal court upheld uh, the judgment of the tribunal, you know, asking that there should be a rerun, uh, election rerun in your constituency. How did you take that? I will start by saying that um, what I suffered from the tribunal to the court of appeal is what I have come to regard as judicial terrorism. I weep for this country and I begin to ask where will Nigerians get justice? When will Nigerians get justice? When will the courts become the last hope of the common man again? Because The legal profession was assaulted yesterday. The judgment is a loud um, caricature of the judiciary because the judgment was less than four pages. The minority judgment at the tribunal, 79 pages. The minority judgment, about 40 plus pages. Then the appeal was read in less than three minutes. To start with, we were never served any judgment notice. My lawyers were called upon at 9.30 in the morning to appear for a judgment at 10. At the time, I was contacted about 9.35 by my lawyers that they just got a call from the Court of Appeal that it should be in you know, the Court of Appeal by 10 that judgment will be given. I called my lead counsel, Ikbazu, SAN. He was in Lagos. I called the lead counsel of the party, Okutepa, SEN. He was in Lokoja. I called Professor Amukwidon, SEN. He was in Jos. So apparently, we had to shop for lawyers to go to rush to the uh, Court of Appeal. And the judgment was given in less than three minutes. And I want to say that it is not about all these pointers. It is about how the legal profession was turned, jurisprudence was turned upside down. The only reason given yesterday for upholding the judgment at the court, at the tribunal, at the first court of instance, was that a wrong date was written on form EC08E, which is the final sheet, result sheet, that instead of 25th, 23rd was written on it. But with my little knowledge of law, I know that elections, election is a pyramid. Election is a process. And form ec 8 E cannot stand on its own. It's a summation, it's a collation of all the results from the pooling units, which is normally recorded on Form EC8A. Without EC8A, there can be no EC8E. EC8E is just one sheet which is putting together all the results from the other pooling units. And the records of proceeding at the lower court were transferred to the appeal court. So the justices of the Supreme Court, of the Court of Appeal, saw that all the results from the pooling unit carried 23rd. Because if your problem is that maybe the date of the election, maybe the election did not hold on that day, you have the primary source of result, which is from EC8A, from the pooling unit. All of them carried 23rd. And you know, because of the size of the constituency, seven local governments that are kilometers apart from each other, 
it is not possible for you to finish uh, collating an election, announcing result, and declaring it on the day the elections held. So the elections actually were was declared on the twenty fifth, and the date written on that sheet is not different from the date of declaration. Let's even assume that it is human error and a mistake has been committed. How can a litigant, Dino Melaye, how can the people of Kogi West Senatorial District who have carried out their civic responsibility of voting suffer for the mistake of INEC? Whose responsibility is it to write uh, the date, the, uh, write the date on, from EC8E? Is the returning officer who at that time is acting on behalf of INEC. So that's why I'm saying that how can myself or the voters, the electorates in Kogi West now suffer for the mistake of an umpire. But let's even leave that area. The painful aspect of it is that there are areas of grounds that were pleaded in the appeal that the appeal court did not even look at at all. For example, we pleaded on the grounds of on the, on the ground that there was no fair hearing. And it is known everywhere, every lawyer knows, it is elementary law, that the issue of fair hearing can be taken at any time in any, any proceedings. And the, case, the, the, the issue of fair hearing is very fundamental and germane because it's a constitutional matter. It's a matter, it's a grand norm issue that is very, very potent, legally potent in any proceeding. And we pleaded that Section 36 of the Constitution have been affronted. Why? Because in the minority judgments at the court, oh sorry, in the, in the lead judgment at the tribunal, the second respondent and third respondents were not considered at all in the judgment. Their witnesses were not examined. Their evidences were not looked at at all. They did not even refer to their evidence, their witnesses, or anything said by these two people in putting up the judgment. And I am appalled that the, the Court of Appeal will look the other way with a germane issue of uh, lack of fair hearing. And Section 1.3 of the Constitution is clear. They say when any other law is in conflict with the Constitution, to the extent of its inconsistency, that law shall be null and void. So any other issue that is not a constitutional matter cannot supersede the issue of the Constitution that was raised. The issue of dates is human error. And a just man should not suffer for the sin of another person. That is one. Then two, if you look at our grants of appeal, at the lower court, at the tribunal, the tribunal granted what was not pleaded by either parties in the case. How did they do that? The prayer of Smart Adeyemi is that elections be cancelled in six out of seven local governments. And Justice Nikki Toby, JSC as it then was, of blessed memory, have given a locus classicus, a judgment that was, is evergreen. And that judgment is that the court is not a Father Christmas. The court cannot grant what you have not prayed for. The court cannot give you what you did not ask for. A man asked that the election be cancelled in six out of seven local governments. But the judgment of the lead judgment of the tribunal said that election be cancelled in all the local governments. So that brings us to the crux of the matter. Uh, you won in your, in your zone, in your central zone, you won six out of seven local governments. Very correct. So how comes your opponent is praying that uh, six local governments uh, should be cancelled, the same six local governments that I won? Was he saying that uh, you didn't win any local government at all? Anyway, what I'm saying is that I cannot take Panadol for another man's headache. And you know, um, smart Ade Yemi and his lawyers from their presentation in court, what I saw is arrogance of ignorance. But it is just painful that outside these grounds I have mentioned, 
I was not the one sued by the petitioner. The petitioner sued Senator Dino Melaye. My form is your one, INEC form that I filled. The name on it is Daniel Dino Melaye. The certificate of return that I have from INEC reads Daniel Dino Melaye. Legally, legally speaking, Daniel Dino Melaye and Senator Dino Melaye, they are not one and the same. And if you go today on your international passport, you have Daniel Dino Melaye and you buy a British Airways ticket that reads Senator Dino Melaye, you will not fly. Or you go to the bank with a national ID card that reads Daniel Dino Melaye and you have a check that is reading Senator Dino Melaye, you can't cash that money. These are elementary illustrations that can give us direct, direct direction. But the court, the minority judgment of the tribunal, struck that petition out with preliminary objection raised on this matter. And there are plutoria of judgments on names. Ivan Evans is there. James Ibori and James Onanafe Ibori judgment is there. And there's a recent judgment by the Court of Appeal itself over an honorable member who was addressed as Honorable So So, and his name is not Honorable, his name is not in the INEC. And the same appeal court ruled against it. And they were talking of mutilations of ballot papers. The latest judgment on elections in Nigeria was given by the Supreme Court in 2019. This same year that the only way to prove infractions in an election is that you must call witnesses from the polling unit. The agents from the polling unit must be called as witnesses. In this case, the entire trial, Smart Adeyemi called only three witnesses. Himself, his director general, and one ward agent. He did not call anybody from any polling unit. So how can his petition stand? The, during cross-examination, he said it was everywhere during the election. So he, he knew that there was rigging everywhere. From Egbe to Kotokarfi is five hours. And yet he voted and the, he, he's not supposed to be moving around on election day because there is restriction of movement. And it's not one of those permitted by law to move around. But with all this the court looked the other way. This is the most peaceful election in the history of Kogi West. There was no one case reported in the police station. It's, I'm not defeating Smart Adeyemi for the first time. I was in APC, he was in PDP in 2015. I defeated him, 1-0. He went to APC, I crossed over to PDP in 2019. I defeated him, 2-0. Now we are going for the third one. I will score a hat trick. It will be 3-0. Because Smart Adeyemi is my political wife. I have political conjugal rights over him. I am with the people and the people are with me. There is a systemic gang up against me. From the presidency to the state governor to APC echelon. They have all ganged up against me. But unfortunately, it does not matter the number of times that Saul came after David. Saul will always prevail. My name is Daniel. No matter the number of lions out there, I will always win. I will always overcome. My name is Daniel. Yeah, yeah. But the truth of the matter is this. They want to create, they purchase a, a, a judgment, and they want to use the opportunity of this judgment to run a violent election where they will just write results. But I am telling you that that is not possible. We will tame them. I serve a God who is strong and mighty. And I can assure you, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord God delivered them from, from them all. My brother, I was incarcerated when the governor spent billions of naira to recall me. I was in custody of the police. They committed, their performance was a beautiful nonsense. They scored 5%. 
5% by all standard is F9. Para, is F9. That failed. They tried to stop me during the general elections this time around. Every arm of government and security agencies, they were against me. I was only released a few days to the election, general election. And even then, the governor barricaded Lokoja. He didn't want me to come in. But get, God still demonstrated his capacity and capability. That same God is still with me. So this temporary setback, this judgment, there are three types of verdicts. I have lost one of the three verdicts. That is the verdict of the courts. But definitely, I have won the verdict of the people and the verdict of God. And I can assure you, as God liveth, I will win this election. I will complete my term by the grace of God. And the judiciary is sick. Nigerian judiciary is not only sick, but equally suffers from a dreadful congenital abnormality. And in an unjust society, silence is a crime. Nigerians must cry out. Nigerians, we must liberate our judges from the clock of the executive. The judges in this country, from the high courts, in fact, from the magistrate courts to the supreme courts, they are living in fear. How long shall we continue in sin and ask grace to abound? We are in a very precarious situation in this country. We are in perilous times when it is abnormal to do the right thing. And those who have attempted to do the right thing are being terrorized, are being victimized, have been oppressed. But the truth have no volume. Some of us have vowed to die telling the truth. We shall not be intimidated, we shall not be cowed. No amount of intimidation, harassment, arrest, rearrest, attempted assassination will detract us from voicing and speaking for those who cannot speak for themselves. We have no other country to call our own but this country. So we shall do everything humanly possible to liberate Nigerians from these gerotocratic leaders, from these financial scavengers and economic cankerworms who have taken over the political hemisphere of this country. What advice do you have for supporters in Kogi West and Torazon? To my supporters across the country and across my senatorial districts, I will ask them to remain calm, to remain peaceful, not to get involved in assaults, whether verbal or physical. We have never been known to be violent because one with God is a majority, but they should not exercise fear because the Holy Book said he has not given us the spirit of fear or timidity, but the spirit of boldness and of sound mind. They should not be afraid of Yabelo. They should not be afraid of APC. They should come out and mass and vote and defend their votes. No amount of intimidation we push us aside and we will prove to them that power like the motto of the PDP power truly belongs to the people they attempted to take it away from us in 2019 they couldn't at the senatorial districts and they cannot do it now because it's the same God yesterday today and forevermore